Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, Time Crimes. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a middle-aged individual named Hector, traveling his way home under the sunny sky. Not long after, he finally arrives at their house, bothered by the things accidentally messed up on the nearby road. With all the boxes spread out, he immediately seeks and calls out for his wife's presence. However, the wife does not hear anything in their garden until Hector arrives with a new table and a plastic bag of fertilizer. They greet each other with a tongue massage before Hector climbs upstairs. Then Hector closes his window and lies on his bed for a perfect rest. Unfortunately, he has difficulty sleeping, so he opens his window again and glances at the scenery outside. Not only that, he grabs a binocular for a clear view of any objects from afar until the telephone unexpectedly rings. Without delay, Hector answers the telephone by asking the caller's name, but hears nothing. He attempts to call it again, but gets prompted to voicemail. He leaves a message that the sent number is calling them and would love to know why. Shortly, his wife arrives, which shocks Hector to drop the telephone under their sofa. She asks Hector about the caller's details and believes it could be just a neighbor or a worker. On the other hand, Hector emphasizes that nobody has their phone number, implying that the call reveals a mysterious impact. A moment later, the wife spoils Hector with several tongue massages and muscle hugs. In the middle of their smelly workout, Hector notices that the phone is still on the voicemail recording, so he turns it off. Moments later, the wife assembles the newly arrived table in the garden, while Hector uses his binoculars to gaze at the forest behind their house. After several seconds of scanning, he sees an individual in red pants and a white shirt. Curious, the wife also attempts to check, but witnesses nothing. Puzzled by the unknown scenery, Hector utilizes his binoculars again from afar, only to see a pretty girl nicknamed Beauty standing in the forest. Beauty slowly removes her shirt, uncovering her small but still beautiful hormone mountains for a perfect view. Then the wife requests the car keys, as she will buy food and groceries. Hector provides the keys and sees this as a perfect opportunity to investigate the said individual. Persistent, Hector rejects the confusing view and sees the red pants on the ground. Not only that, he goes nearer to figure out what's happening in that jungle. After moments of walking, he arrives at one section of woodland and notices a fallen trash bin and bicycle. He feeds his curiosity by wandering the forest Thai area until seeing a girl's feet. He goes nearer, only to see Beauty naked and unconscious. He attempts to throw a stick that only lands at the red pants. With all the enigmatic events, he decides to throw one more that hits Beauty's hands. Alarmingly, the naked Beauty remains unconscious, which triggers Hector to go closer. Hector slowly walks and stares at Beauty's sexy but smelly body. The moment he sits down closer, a horrifying circumstance arrives. Hector's arm gets stabbed by an unknown man, causing him to flee his stinky ass immediately from that place. Afraid of terrible danger, Hector briskly runs in the middle of the forests and hides under the tree. Seconds pass, Hector tries to sneak a peek using his binoculars, which enables him to witness an individual holding a bloody scissor. When Hector moves his binoculars upward, he spots a man whose head gets filled with bandages. A shocking tension arises when the bandaged man looks at him, as if holding an invisible binocular. Unhesitatingly, Hector runs for his shitty life and recognizes a metal fence. He undoubtedly climbs the barrier, which collapses and causes him to be unconscious for seconds. Fleeing from the mysterious chaos, he finally sees a nearby building, which is a chance to ask for help. Hector knocks and screams for help, but hears no response. Desperate for his life, he picks a stone, breaks the window, and enters the place with no one inside. He roams the mansions and recognizes a white paper with some strange signs on it. Next, he opens one door that leads him to a laboratory. Afterward, he treats the stab wound on his arm with a white bandage. He recognizes a walkie-talkie and starts saying hello. Surprisingly, a scientist answers the walkie-talkie, stating the confusion on how a person got into his laboratory. Then Hector begins sharing his story that a bandaged man is chasing him and that he gets stabbed in his arm. While sharing the story, Hector hears thunder that distracts his storytelling. The scientist advises Hector to stay at the laboratory for a moment, as he is in another building. Roaming the laboratory, Hector hears the walkie-talkie as if the scientist is talking to someone from another line. He grabs the device, and the scientist asks if the man has a bandage on his face. The scientist begins sharing that he sees a bandaged man on the surveillance cameras approaching the building. As the misery draws nearer, the scientist informs Hector that the bandaged man has jumped the fence and is walking towards the building. Thus, Hector blocks the doors and stressfully suggests escalating the situation to the police officers. Unfortunately, the scientist cannot get an outside line, so he only instructs Hector to stay at the lab in the meantime. With all the seeming turmoil, the scientist informs Hector to escape the laboratory before the bandaged man's rival. He directs Hector toward another building by turning on the lights for the path to be seen. 
Amidst the uncertainty, Hector walks the path for his survival while the scientist guides him via walkie-talkie. Seconds later, the scientist faint-heartedly emphasizes that the bandaged man also sees the path. The agony expands when the scientist's camera gets turned off, ordering Hector to run quickly. Driven by a massive fear, Hector carelessly runs to survive until he trembles near the building. He hears a car, which triggers him to stand up and heed toward the building. There, the scientist accompanies him, assuring him that Hector will be safe. A little later, Hector notices a sizable mechanical device and its batteries in the laboratory. The scientist releases his controller to show that Hector can hide in the big machine as it can open and close. Seconds pass, and a car arrives at the building. The scientist explains that Hector needs to hide now and will operate the machine, but he will follow before it closes. When Hector stares at the window to inspect, the bandaged man appears and shocks him. Running out of time, Hector proceeds to the big machine for survival. As the hatch closes, he notices that the scientist is not going after him. Hector suspects something mysterious, but it's too late as the machine closes, leading him to a bizarre underwater revelation. After a few seconds, Hector exits the machine and gets occupied with many unanswerable questions. He discovers that it is daytime when the sun is still shining. He then confronts the scientist about the puzzling scenario. The scientist seems to know nothing and is unaware of the phenomenon. Intrigued by the enigmatic happening, he uses his binoculars to glance at the side of his house. Surprisingly, he sees himself lifting the table box toward his wife. The scientist also attempts to see, leading them to a thrilling truth. It's then revealed that Hector travels a couple of hours back in time due to the machine, where he sees himself in the actual occurrences. Thrilled, Hector wants to go to the police, but the scientist stops him. The scientist states that doing so will complicate the problem, as another Hector currently leaves. Therefore, the scientist acknowledges him now as Hector II. Unbelievably, Hector II sees his original self again doing the exact thing he did earlier that day. The confusing rhythms continue as Hector II, and the scientist tries to solve the puzzle. They proceed to the nearby building, and the window glass door is still not broken. Next, the scientist gets his calendar to draw a signal or direction pasted on the wall. It can be surmised that it is the paper that Hector noticed previously on the night of the incident. Soon afterward, Hector II notices a phone, which triggers him to dial their phone number. The Hector at home answers the phone, which scares him, dropping the call instead. Hector II then realizes that this is the moment where he receives a call with no response from the caller. The scientist hears the ring and the voicemail and strictly provides a warning. He emphasizes that Hector II should not alter the chain of events and should not stop Hector from getting into the tank. Eager to fix the mess, Hector II grabs a key and drives away from the building. While driving and traveling, he notices a girl named Beauty with red pants and a white shirt. He stares at Beauty riding a Tesla bike down the road with her two heavy hormone mountains. Then another red car intentionally bumps his vehicle. The incident leads him to collide with the trees and acquire a bloody cut on his head. He removes the bandage on his arm and begins covering his entire face. He then realizes that changing the sequence of events will harm his life. Another surprising truth emerges, when Hector II realizes that he now looks like, or to be exact, becomes the bandaged man he encountered a while ago. Meanwhile, Beauty approaches Hector II, intending to help and call an ambulance. Then Hector II rises from the car and feels dizzy after the accident. Beauty offers him water and fixes his bandage with a scissor. Since Hector II wants to replicate the same natural events, he stops Beauty from leaving. He also sees a black suit and decides to wear it. After that, he convinces Beauty to go with him to the middle of the forest to make the same events happen. As Hector II sees himself Hector from his house, Beauty takes the chance of escaping, so she runs her heavy mountains away. Consequently, Hector II finds Beauty and threatens her life with a scissor. Then he sees Hector scanning the forest with binoculars from their garden. Since Hector II wants to replicate the happenings poorly, he orders Beauty to undress for Hector to see it from afar. Threatened, Beauty obeys and begins pulling her shirt to reveal her primitive mountains. He also orders Beauty to sit down, but Beauty composes her strength to kick his light ass before running her heavy mountains away. Without delay, Hector II chases her, leading them both to fall on the forest's edge. Hector II remains awake while Beauty becomes unconscious. He then lays Beauty out naked, as what he can recall happens. He also places the red pants and white shirt in one area until he hears a sound from another. An alarming tension arises when Hector II notices Hector approaching Beauty. Believing that he needs to duplicate the event, Hector II sneakily moves and tightly holds the scissor, only to stab Hector's arm. As a result, Hector screams in the middle of the solemn atmosphere, while Hector gets overwhelmed by the enigmatic episodes. Since Hector II wants to make things the same, he follows Hector, who is hiding in the woods. Then Hector II tries to recall what had happened and forms his two hands like invisible binoculars, which causes Hector to show up and run. At this point, Hector II only watches until he hears Beauty scream, implying the bewildering matter. 
He moves to where the sound comes from, but only finds a necklace. During the night, Hector II goes home to see his wife. He enters his house and sees no one. Hector II climbs up the stairs, where piles of wood get thrown before him. He continuously climbs stairs and sees the window widely open. He attempts to seek his wife, but hears a noise from the inside again. Then he chases the noise and moves onto the roof, only to grab her. Upon pulling the feet, a terrifying tension expands as Hector II believes that he has killed his wife. Broken by the turn of events, Hector II trembles and grabs the walkie-talkie, in which he hears the scientist and Hector conversing. Hector II then speaks to the scientist and informs him that he is the one wearing the bandage. Soon after, Hector II leaves his house and decides to go back to the building. There, he crosses the path with a series of bulbs, the same path he walked before. He sneaks at the window, which scares Hector into entering the machine. A little later, Hector II rests and sits near the door. When Hector manages to enter the tank, the scientist approaches Hector II as if they are now in the present time. The scientist also says that he needs to examine Hector II for being the first to travel in time. However, Hector II wants another shot in the tank, so he threatens the scientist to ruin everything. Consequently, the scientist secretly throws the batteries before entering the building again. Hector II forces the scientist to operate the machine again, as he wants to use it. The scientist once declines, but agrees in the end by finding the battery. Surprisingly, Hector II realizes that the scientist seems to know the sequence of events, including the moment that he wants to enter the tank again. Another revelation arises when the scientist shares that there is Hector III, who first exits seconds before Hector II steps out from the machine. The scientist further explains that Hector III threatens him to remain silent before the arrival of Hector II. Additionally, the scientist states that Hector III seems to know what is going to happen. After a puzzling conversation, they both realize that Hector II will become Hector III upon entering the machine again. Thus, Hector II tries to throw the walkie-talkie, allowing them to find the battery under the rain. With no question, they execute the plan where Hector II enters the machine. In just a moment, the puzzling episode gets routed to the point of view of Hector III. He exits the machine confidently and states that he is from the future. The now Hector III orders the scientist to go with the flow in assisting. Confident, Hector III slaps the scientist to help him get rid of the other two Hectors. Surprisingly, Hector II finally arrives, and the scientist obeys Hector III's suggestion. While watching the events, Hector III observes and plans to eliminate the two versions by creating the same loop of events again. To perform the secret plan, Hector III sneakily exits the house, while the scientist does the same thing. Since the gate is closed, Hector III asks for another car, and the scientist grants him. Without hesitation, Hector III fastly drives his car, where he passes beauty on the road. To fulfill the plans, Hector III intentionally bumps the white vehicle to stop Hector II by any means. However, the accident also brings tragedy, as Hector III collides with another tree. It is also revealed that the same red car bumped Hector II a while ago. He then calls the scientist to share that he might fail. However, Hector III recognizes beauty in the middle of the forest. Therefore, Hector III realizes that the future seems familiar. When Beauty sees him, a scream disrupts the solemn grove, but Hector III calms her down, stating they will not get caught by the bandaged man. Hector III begins sharing that they are running from the same person for a weird unknown reason. As we can remember, Hector II gets distracted by Beauty's scream, but fails to locate her. During the night, Beauty helps Hector III by accompanying him to a nearby house. Hector III is entirely aware that it's their house, so he refuses. However, Beauty selflessly brings Hector III for assistance. Inside the house, Hector III gets surprised to see his wife. On the other hand, the wife remains silent as she believes intruders are in their home. She also shares that she called the police about the situation. Amidst the conversation, Hector II from the outside seems to enter. Hector III calms his wife and brings her to the basement for her safety. Afterward, Hector III goes back inside, trying to replicate the same events. Hector III throws a pile of wood on the stairs. He also cuts Beauty's hair and dresses her in a red coat to disguise Hector II. Beauty obeys out of fear, while Hector III gives her directions to run upstairs to the attic. This way, Hector III can save the wife through Beauty's tragedy. The movie ends with Hector III sitting on his lawn with his wife, ignoring the sounds of tragedy in their house. Meanwhile, Hector II accidentally kills Beauty and will return to the lab. At the present time, Hector III is able to alter the history and will soon eliminate the old duplicates of himself created by the time machine. Indeed, the movie depicts the desperation to alter life's phases in a paradoxical manner called time crimes. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.